So the big picture for this lesson is the square root function. First thing I want to talk about is graphing the parent function, f of x equals the square root of x, and I made a handy input-output table here, and I used inputs that are perfect squares, so the outputs would be integers and it would be easy to graph. So 0, 0, first coordinate, then 1, 1, then 4, 2, 9, 3, So something like that. And the graph does increase at a decreasing rate. So my next perfect square is 16 and that would be 4. So the graph does continue to increase but not as quickly. And notice that the graph dead ends at 0, 0. It doesn't go negative because negative inputs for the square root function are undefined. So it starts at 0 and increases at a decreasing rate from there. So what's the domain? The domain x is a real number such that x is greater than or equal to 0. In other words, 0 and positive inputs only. And the range, y is an element of the real number set, such that y is greater than or equal to 0. So no negative outputs either. So the general form of the square root function is this. f of x equals a times the square root of bx minus h, then plus k. And the a is the vertical stretch or shrink or reflection. The b is the horizontal stretch, shrink, or reflection. The h is the translation left to right. And the k is the translation up or down. So in the lesson, you're going to be practicing doing different transformations. I'll do one example here. Let's just say you have f of x equals square root of x minus 2. And then you're going to do g of x equals f of 1 half x. What you would do is you would substitute the 1 half in for the x here. So you would get g of x equals square root of 1 half x minus 2. And that would be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. So all the transformations that you've learned for different functions, they apply to the square root function just the same. So that's the big picture for this lesson.